Hello, everybody. You're listening to Making Life Brighter Radio, and I'm your host, Winifred Adams. I'm happy to be back, and I'm happy to be back with something amazingly uplifting. We have with us today very, very special guest, pop hit song girl, previously girl superstar, Natasha Slayton. And Natasha is here with her brand new kick-ass single that she has put out around the world called Love Me Like Me. Welcome, Natasha. I am so excited to be here. It's Thank so you. nice to have you. I have to tell you, we're just going to like cut to the chase because it's so amazing. This song knocked me out when I heard this. This is the best single that I've heard in a long time. This is not only heartfelt, but the beat, everything, your voice. Oh my God. I'm so, so excited to have you here today. Thank you for coming. Of course, this gives me chills. I'm so excited. So this is my first interview that I've done about this song. And I feel like it could not be more divinely, perfectly timed because I've been listening to your radio shows for like five years now and working with you as my healer for five years. And I just remember like listening, even back when I first started um, listening to you and working with you, I was like, how can I get on this show? Like, I really want... (laughs) So this is like a manifestation. I mean, I was like, I know I'm not ready yet, but like, I feel like I'm going to be on this show at some point. And then just this song and everything that it represents. And it's just so. Let's give people a little bit of background because your life is the perfect example of this single. And let's start, let's back up and tell people your time in GRL. Okay. Tell us about where you began your pop stardom career because you are multi-talented and you're beautiful inside and out. Tell us where your your childhood led you to get you to this point. Absolutely. So I started um, singing and dancing at a really young age and taking lots of lessons and and growing up in the industry, I did professional acting and um, I started writing my own songs around 14 and playing all around LA. And then um, I started doing a burlesque show because I danced as well. And Robin Anton, who was the creator of the Pussycat Dolls, ended up seeing one of those videos of this burlesque show. And so I ended up meeting with her and meeting with Larry Rudolph and Ron Fair and Robin Anton herself. And I was so excited because these are the people that I had looked up to sort of my whole life. I've always had very differing musical tastes, but I also really love pop music. And so I always wanted to be part of like the Pussycat Dolls. I wanted to be Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears and Spice Girls. And so I thought it was really interesting that I was meeting with the masterminds of literally all of these groups. And so- That's uh, that's That's a huge shout out to you and your talent. (laughs) Pretty crazy. So when I got offered to meet with them, I was just so stoked. I was like, there's no way this is coming together like this, how perfect. So I met with them and we were actually supposed to be the Pussycat Dolls 2.0. And then we started working with the most incredible pop producers, Max Martin and Dr. Luke, who were a couple of other people that I'd been dreaming of working with. And when we started working with them- um, You don't believe in like going from from one step to the next, you go from like zero to (laughs) 10,000. (laughs) <laughs> right out the door. I'm such a dreamer and I always just visualize like everything I want and it's just really cool how it all started to come together so perfectly and so we started working with them and, and the group became GRL and um, it, it just took off like we like you just said we went from zero to 100 really really fast we toured the world we had a hit song with Pitbull um, we went quadruple platinum in Australia We did the Tonight Show, the Today Show, Good Morning America, and all these really amazing things that I'd been dreaming of for so, so long. Um, Simultaneously, while all that was happening, I'd actually just gotten out of um, a really, really bad relationship when the group had just started. And so for the first time in my life, I started dabbling in drugs and serious alcohol addiction and... um, I kind of spiraled while all of these amazing things were happening and really began to self-sabotage in a lot of ways and didn't really capitalize on everything that I could have while all of my dreams were literally unfolding right before me. Um, And then we had a major tragedy strike in the group. Um, One of our band members who was like my sister and one of my best friends, 
um, took her life. And That's the- so sad. That's so hard because here you are knit together like an absolute team and you you work together, you practice and train together, you're doing everything together and here you are at the top. And so having experienced that along with drugs and alcohol, how do you think that affected you personally differently than if you hadn't been dabbling in drugs and alcohol? Um, I think that I really just went into such a dark place. And instead of being able to start healing and looking at the situation from a a different perspective, like I just was really in a really, really, really dark space. I don't know how else to really say that. Sure. Yeah, of course. I mean, that is, that is so heartbreaking. So what happened to GRL after that? We, um, we took a few months off, of course, and we ended up doing a really beautiful tribute song to Simone called Lighthouse, which is one of my favorite songs we've ever done. Um, and we got to perform it and, and go around the world and, and share the song. Um, but then it was just really hard to move forward. And um, we ended up separating as a group after that, which, you know, looking back, makes a lot of sense. But at the time, I mean, it was just so devastating, but really we all needed to take time to heal and really process what had happened. I mean, I still feel like I'm processing um, to this day. You know, her, her spirit just, it feels like it's all around you and that she (laughs) is like cheering you on from behind, especially with this new single that look at, look at what you've done. Look at how far you've come. I feel that's so wholeheartedly um and like not not too long after Simone passed I actually lost my mom I think it was less than a year and a half and I'm an only child and uh, my mom and I were best friends and so that was like oh my gosh like how can I possibly continue to do anything like I don't even know how to be anymore I don't know who I am I don't know where I am where I'm going what the point of anything is um I would so, say there's probably a lot of young people that have experienced this and, and can relate to that journey and, and realize, I mean, not so many people maybe have lost their mother, but maybe they found themselves without a parent somehow when they needed it most. Mm-hmm. And here you are bringing this beautiful message in after all of this tragedy. How did your mom's passing I wanted to say distancing actually because you know I don't feel like she's separate from you either (laughs) than ever before it's kind of funny I feel her every day yeah her 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 spirit is all around you like glowing with joy so how did your mom um in the separation without your mom affect you at that point in your in your journey in your career Um, Well, everything was just at a standstill. So when GRL stopped, like I had gone, I'm just backtracking a little bit. I'd gone right back into like trying to to make money and like frantically trying to figure out what is life. And when my mom passed, it just, I felt completely severed from everything I'd ever known. Even though I saw so many angel signs all over the place, like I, I felt her so strongly, but it also really woke me up because I think like within a couple of weeks of her passing is when I got gifted a session with you. <laughs> and that's really when <laughs> the healing really, really, really started. After Simone passed, I had started doing energy work, um, some different people and just trying to heal myself. And, and I definitely did heal a lot, but it wasn't until I started working with you that <laughs> my world just got rocked but in the best way possible and not long after that is when I finally got sober and was just able to completely sort of clear away all of the dark and heavy energies and the traumas and physical too not just emotional and and mental but physical spiritual on every level and yeah my mom passing I mean it just 
I don't know. It, it's weird because like, in a sense, I felt way more mortal than ever before because I lost someone so close to me for the first time ever. And then in another sense, I sort of felt immortal. I felt immediately connected to all of the energies that exist. So, you know, a- honestly, first of all, I just want to say for the audience, I asked Natasha if she'd like to do this interview because I love this song. I love this single. And this is just a culmination of so much hard work on her part and so much amazing stuff. It's not about me and my healing work. <clears throat> this is literally about her and her music and you all have to support this song because it is a message for now. It is so in this now space, I can't even tell you. So anyway, we're, we're gonna just dangle that carrot all the way through until the end. <laughs> I always somehow bring every conversation I have back to you, whether I'm talking to you or not. I'm like, I love Winifred just so much. Um, but yeah, Natasha, yeah. Your, your healing journey, let's talk about that a little bit because you connected into spirit having lost your mom and your mom, in a way, and it's sad to say, but she sort of freed you to find yourself in a sense, in a way that you wouldn't have maybe otherwise the same. And this tragedy is always a catalyst to some kind of growth, as people say. However, you've taken an extraordinary independent step now. You've really dug deep. So of all your healing work that you can reflect upon, what changed you the most? What was it? What was the turning point that really shifted you? Or was there more than one? I mean, there's been so many. Um, I think, I mean, I have to say that stopping and cutting out drugs and alcohol was just such a huge one because I feel like the world went from really blurry and super dark to like technicolor, but it's been a process because it didn't happen. I mean, it, it did happen overnight in the sense that like, once I finally was able to release the drugs and alcohol, like I, I released them, but at the same time, I didn't feel clear right away. There was still so much work in that. So I don't know if there was ever like one significant point. Can you think of one thing that you always reflect back on to yourself that says, you know what, I'm going to remember that for the rest of my life. That's a tenant that I can really hold on to. Oh man. One learning experience that you hold dear. This is such a good question. And I wish I had come prepared because I can't think of one off the top of my head. It'll all come to you later. <laughs> it, will. it always does. So tonight I'll be like, oh my gosh, I have the perfect answer. Well, let's talk about the song a little bit because by the way, I was a huge fan of GRL. I loved all those songs and they were on my rotational play for sure. Oh, you, know, you know, they're still in my head. And, oh. and I, I, I love that really. It, I'm so happy for you and your journey and, and now you're taking it to the next level. So let's start with your personal solo career. What is it that you see yourself doing now and what's your inspiration as you move along? Absolutely. Well, I mean, when I started, when I went, set out to create this song because I knew I knew I wanted to create something as my first official solo song that could really speak to my healing journey, but not in a cheesy way, like really authentically and genuinely speak to my soul and my healing journey. And I wanted it to be something that reflected who I am, but could also offer bits of inspiration to anyone listening um, because I've been through so much and I don't really openly talk about all of it all the time. And being able to express myself through music um, is a much easier way for me to get those messages out there, at least up until this point, <laughs> now that I'm talking about it, it feels good. But um, I really wanted to create a song that really spoke to that. And I remember walking into this first session with um, this producer who I got connected to just by chance through my singing coach. And this is the first song. Normally you go into a session and you know, you you write a bunch of songs, um, not in one session, but over a bunch of sessions. And like, maybe you use one of them, maybe you toss all of them. But this song 
was the first song we wrote together and we almost finished it in one session. And I just remember walking in, normally I have ideas with me or, or melodies like ready to go. And I really didn't, but I just came in with a feeling and I was like, I just want to write a song that captures my healing journey and that captures who I am. And I actually hadn't even sort of figured out what my sound was going to be at the time because like, I love pop music, but I also love R&B, I love hip hop, I love rock, like I love all of these things. And I just knew that it needed to be me, <laughs> that's all I knew. And then when you're going into work with a producer, like they need more details than that. But <laughs> <laughs> they really, you know, um, so I just sort of brought like everything I loved and I'm like, okay, let's create something. And we started working on this and it just organically began to unfold. And as we were writing and as there were little guitar parts playing, like I knew I wanted there to be a guitar influence, but a little bit of pop and like some R&B drums. Um, yeah, I just, as, it, as we began working, I was just like, yes, yes, yes. And I just got chills from the beginning until the end. And I just knew like, okay, this is it. I don't know what it is about this song. It's bigger than I am. I, I don't even feel like I was part of the writing process. I was obviously, but like, it just feels, Divine. Well, I got chills too. I mean, it, it just totally blew me away when I first heard this. I was like, wow, holy cow. And it's something that I wanted to hear again and again and again. It was something. <laughs> we have to be in COVID. My dog is drinking water in the background of this interview. <laughs> I haven't started barking yet. Or like my, my dog Binks loves to snore at really inappropriate times. Exactly. Really badly, but <laughs> so good. We're, we're keeping it real. That's all. So, was it melody first or was it lyrics first for the song? I think it was, I think it was the first line of the song because I'd said something to one of the other writers that was brought in. Um, and I said, you know, when I'd first started to become sober, it's not a sober song, it's not about sobriety, but I knew that I didn't want the song to be about love and like another person. Cause I was like, no, this is really about me and not in an ego sense, but this is about me and it needs to be just about me. And um, the other writer and the producer, they were kind of like, oh, well, maybe we can kind of make it more relatable and make it about like love. And I'm like, mm, no, it needs to be about me. <laughs> and <laughs> so one of the first things I said was when I had first started getting sober, I was going to AA meetings. It's not for me. I, I don't do that anymore. But like originally, and my sponsor at the time said something that always stuck with me. Maybe this is the moment you're talking about. <laughs> but she said, sober was the feeling I was searching for all along. And I have chills. And I just really wanted to capture that because the thing that I knew more than anything is that, okay, I was chasing after these feelings that are really synthetic. And I love the way that I was feeling, but they weren't real. And I knew that if I was able to feel those things, I could achieve those feelings in a real way. I didn't know how at the time, but by the time I wrote the song, I felt like, okay, I know how to get there ish. It's a journey. It's a constant process. But so that was really like the first sort of thing we were talking about. And then the first line, I don't remember who exactly wrote it, but I think we, we all did, but it's, um, I was wasting time looking for a feeling I could never find till I started healing. And that's just my favorite line ever because yeah, I have chills. <laughs> right from the gate, it sets the stage for exactly what I wanted to say with this song. And so it was a mix between that and some guitar. I forget if I had like a melody, maybe like one line of a melody. Um, I remember I came up with like da 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 for the, for the chorus. But I think that came with the guitar, it just all just came together so perfectly. And so you really gelled with this producer. And, yes. And can we say his name? Oh yeah, Lennon. <laughs> Lennon, you rock, buddy. <laughs> you kicked it, you brought it home, home run, awesome. Good job, <laughs> seriously. So, so exciting. So now in, in writing this, <clears throat> it's particularly interesting how the lyrics and your delivery is so pronounced. I've never really heard you this way. And mm -hmm. in hearing this, I feel like I could really hear into your soul. I could just hear your resonance 
so sincerely and I listened to it again and I listened to it again. I'm like, oh my God. And then I just put it on replay and I just played it like, honest, I'm not joking you. I played it and let it go all night long. I just, I wanted to absorb this message into my consciousness. And then I shared it far and wide and I'm sharing it here far and wide. And I expect everybody here to show the love and go and stream or download this song because it's something that you could even gift somebody. It's so inspiring and uplifting. So no. can you can you just sing a little bit of it? Oh my gosh. Just I don't even know what the key is, but <laughs> well all that I ever needed was looking in the mirror back at me. And it's hard to believe that all of my life I couldn't see. Nobody could love me like nobody could love me like me. Oh, I love it. I still have chills. Oh my God. It's a lot higher than that, by the way, but I'm really bad at finding the key by myself. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, you know what? Uh, this is just the beginning of your next steps, obviously. So what's next for you re in regards to like an EP or an album or what do you plan to do? Um, well, I'm doing as much as I can um, as an independent artist. <laughs> so, you know, that's always fun. Um, but I do have plans. There's a couple of other songs in the works. So mm -hmm. it just depends how fast I can create them with, you know, the amount of money that I currently have. But, you know, we're working on that. Um, I mean, sponsorship, folks. Do you hear that loud and clear? Yes, sponsorship. Like sponsorship to a true pop star. And <laughs> good messages. <laughs> That's right. Uplifting messages. And that's, you know what, we need that right now, really. And I, and I mean this because that song to me speaks to any age group. And that's what really struck me is just the voice, your voice in the song and the way the beat was, it wasn't overbearing. There wasn't one part that just really ruined it. And you waited till the next part came. The whole thing was lovely from beginning to end. And I wanted to hear it again and again. And I think every age group can benefit right now from this. Every age group. That means so much to me. And I drove Lennon really crazy with making sure every part was perfect. He was like, I've never met anyone that's this specific. I'm like, I'm really sorry. I'm like the princess and the pea. I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Well, your, your voice in this sounds so so great so when you were done i keep thinking this i want to ask you this when you were done and you listened to it and you really were like okay this is it and you listen to it that next time because you always do you always go back and you're like okay we're done now right and then you listen to it again when you knew it was right what did you feel oh i cried like i'm thinking about it now i can cry too because honestly like Every time I would work on solo music um, my, my whole life, like every time I got back a song, it just didn't ever feel right. And most of the time it was because of me or my delivery or maybe, you know, the production wasn't quite right or whatever reason. Now I know it's because this had to be my first song, but you know, I was just so scared. Like I actually, when, when Lennon was sending me different mixes, I was scared to listen. And because I didn't want to feel those feelings again of it not being right. And when it was finally right, oh, I was like the, the happiest girl in the world. Like, this is the song, this is it. And I know so many people put out songs, but man, just, it just feels so good. I'm so happy for you. This is amazing. So the trajectory is just to continue this into okay. either an EP or an album and then, um, you know, like touring, do you, do you see yourself going out and performing? Yeah. Are you going to do a video? Or are you going to do like a, a... All the things. I'd love to do all the things. So I'm doing as much as I can at the moment and just continuing with everything and wanting to create more music and perform it all. And yeah, all the things. So what does spirit mean to you? Hmm. You and your very profound questions. <laughs> <laughs> Spirit to me means all that is real and true. Spirit is love and beyond anything that I personally can comprehend with my human mind. All that is. All it is, awesome. And so 
you have two beautiful little doggies that are your your sidekicks. Are they ever going to debut in a video? Oh my gosh, that would be so amazing. <laughs> Bambi would be running away scared of all the camera equipment and Binks would be like so excited to be the center of attention. <laughs> I, I hear them periodically in, in the background and they seem very, very sweet to your world. If you could tell your mom one thing, what would you say to her? Oh, just that I love her and appreciate her so much and everything she did. And that I'm really sorry for all the times that I was mean to her. Uh, I'm sure she doesn't even hold that against you in any way. And that is so proud of you right now. I'm, I'm quite sure she is. She's just glowing and holding, holding all the light around you to take this further with you. I mean, this is a song that it, it should be on TV and in either a hit show. It should be like in the perfect rollout commercial that just never ends. This is <laughs> such a positive message. It's just so, so beautiful. It's on iTunes. Tell everybody where they can find it. Yes, absolutely. You can find it on every streaming platform, iTunes, Apple Music, Amazon. Um, I don't know why I said it like that. Amazon, uh, YouTube, Spotify, of course. Um, and then you can follow me at Natasha Slayton on Instagram. And all my other handles are similar, but like a little bit different. So I don't know if you want me to go into all those, but. No, it's, I think, I think directing people to where they can download and stream this. Okay, so you had numbers previously when I flipped out about this song and asked you to come on. Do you know what your numbers are? Do you know, I mean, you were doing like number three in some country. Oh and, yeah, and I did. Uh, I reached number three in Saudi Arabia, which was really, really cool because again, there's, I'm an independent artist and there's no real promotional dollars behind this. So, and no real team, just like me and Lennon. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I was number three in Saudi Arabia and number seven in Brazil, iTunes Brazil, which is just uh, so cool. That's huge. Uh, yeah, and then the streaming numbers are still, you know, they're low, but for an independent artist, maybe they're good, but um, they've doubled since we spoke, so that's good. I am so excited for you. I can't wait to see where this goes to. I mean, this, this is just the beginning, but, you know, we always think in America that you have to do more, 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 more. Why can't one thing be so wonderful and, and appreciated like old albums used to be and really absorbed? And I hope that everybody will absorb this song the way I would hope they would receive it because it's so touching. So, and it's hip, it's cool. I mean, it's really fun. It's, it's happy, it's a happy song. So if you, if you could do another theme what other themes are you are you shooting for? What other kind of ideas do you have in mind? Yes. For, like song, maybe for music. For music, for song, like song ideas? Mm -hmm. um, well, I have one song that um, is almost finished written, uh, getting written. Oh my gosh, why can't I speak? Um, one song that's in the writing process right now called Beauty in the Broken Pieces. Oh. So kind of, I feel like a perfect bookend to this song because it kind of just turns all of the pieces of us that we look at as if they're they're broken or they're not good but it's really what makes us beautiful and so I'm really excited about that song and then I have like another idea um just because I feel like so many people um are big fans of lying and I really believe that that's you know they're lying to the parts of themselves they don't want to admit to or or bring to the surface but um I do have a concept of wanting to talk about how I would rather a bitter, a bitter truth than a sweet lie. Nice. I'm talking on that as well. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. So of all the people that are your true inspiration, who could you name as like your number one inspir inspiration, your, your mentor in music, so to speak? Oof, I take inspiration from so many different places. So that's another really difficult question for me. I mean, for all time, like singing wise, I would say, you know, Christina Aguilera and Mariah Carey, of course, Aretha Franklin and, and all the classics. Um, but I grew up listening to the Stones and the Ramones and like doo-wop and, and Motown and all of that. I, I really hold dear to my heart as well. And blues, like I grew up with a lot of blues playing in the house. Um, but currently, like I really love Summer Walker and Miguel and um, 
who else do I love listening to? I mean, I also really like Megan the Stallion, you know, <laughs> but yeah, I, I just get my inspiration from a lot of different places. Kind of depends on the mood. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Whether I'm twerking or like want to have a thoughtful moment. <laughs> well, Natasha, I really wish you all the best with this. I want to say thank you so much for being here. I want to have you back. I can't wait to hear your new songs. I can't wait to cheer you on at the Grammys and go, go Natasha. <laughs> this, this is so, so cool. And um, the title of this song it's called love me like me and it is so cool so actually what genre is it pop music yeah it's it's pop it's, it's under pop, pop. Okay. yeah I, mean, I like to call it pop r&b because for whatever reason i like you know i'm like oh i'm not just bubblegum pop but it is pop for sure <laughs> oh yeah no you kill it this is awesome and i don't want to say that i correct that cancel cancel you rock this song. You just make it really, really, really hot. It's, it's, your voice sounds so good in this. So there you go, everybody. I just wanted to introduce you to Natasha Slayton. This is her brand new single, Love Me Like Me. And we're going to have Natasha back. I'm going to post all the links and keep them at the top of the YouTube page. You'll see them on all my pages and everywhere. So go stream this, go download it become a super fan because this is a tremendous message. And, you know, I'm kind of choosy about the things that I want to share with you. And this message is ideal. It's perfect. And I just, I am such a fan and I love it. Natasha, thank you for being here. I love you so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I love you. So there you go, everybody. Natasha Slayton, previously a girl, now her own her own solo career with this song, Love Me Like Me. All right, and we'll see you next time on Making Life Brighter. Thanks for watching and go jolly.